Greetings all, the Devious Monkey here. Great news and not so great news. The great news is the camera gear arrived. Most of the camera gear arrived. The most important stuff. So I did get the A7R4 with the grip, with the 100-400, the 85, and the collar for the 100-400. I didn't get the two filters, the free will filters, and I didn't get the eye cup for my big nose. Everything tracked up until just a little bit ago where it said I might get them over the next three days. So I'm not waiting three days to open all this shit up because I don't have a couple of filters. So you'll have to wait. I am getting a bunch of other stuff tomorrow. It may be included. If so, I will do another video tomorrow on the other stuff that's coming that I haven't gotten yet. But let's dig into this stuff. Now, I did previously film myself opening up the shipping box and opening up each one of these packages just to make sure that everything that I got was intact was untouched and unused that was the big thing because remember they tried to sell me used shit and it didn't work out with the packaging because i was supposed to get the other stuff cheaper and then they tried to charge me full price for all the stuff without package so all that being said i wanted to have it on film that i opened the box up straight from the shipping box opened up each container looked at it inspected it make sure nothing was broken and make sure it was all brand new with the exception of the collar which i already knew I was getting used. So let's get busy here. So we're going to start with this uh, A7 IV. I will try to keep my enthusiasm that I had when I first opened it because damn, this thing's amazing. All right, so, all right, no one ever gives a shit about this kind of stuff. Here's all the paperwork and everything. N most people don't. I do. I literally read every manual for everything that I buy, cover to cover. You know, any vehicle manual that I get, any gear that I get, if it has a manual with it, I read it. Uh, this would probably be some form of cable management. Cable to be managed. Come on. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we have the A7R4 strap. Come on. There we go. Uh, which I will never use but I gotta get it out of the way. All right, here is the actual camera. I'm gonna set that down, because I'm gonna get everything out of here first. <clears throat> then we have the charger. And the charger cable. Okay, Brrr, drum roll. Okay, here it is. The Sony A7R4. Now, when I pulled this thing out of the the box, the bag, and all that kind of stuff, and I grabbed this grip for the first time, holy crap. That's what I was all giddy about. I was like, oh my god, this thing's amazing. Like, I have never had a camera, and that includes putting handles on them or putting on cages and all that kind of shit, fit better in my hand than this camera does right now. And that's like without any grip put on it, any cage, any of that shit, it literally, is like the perfect fit for my hand. I don't have big fat hands, but I do have long monkey fingers and stuff. So it, it's always been a challenge. And it's another reason why I add cages or L grips to all of my all of my cams and all that kind of stuff. Look, even my fingers go all the way down and, and stay on the camera body. It's amazing. I have a lot to learn about this. I am pretty impressed with all of the buttons. They definitely are a lot more pronounced than they were on, on any of the past Sony cameras that I have had or do have. Not busting on my A6600s because you know how much I love those, but yeah, this thing is gonna be amazing. So I'm just gonna set it off to the side there and take all of these thingamajiggers here. Oh, by the way, I already took the battery out and it's over there charging. Now we're gonna do this amazing grip. Same stuff, it's got all the paperwork on the side. I'm not gonna take that out. Again, wow. I mean, that that's a hell of a grip. <laughs> Sorry, that was kind of a bad dad joke. But yeah, I mean, this thing is, is phenomenal as far as how it feels in my hand. Back when I started shooting, however many years ago, couple of decades uh, when I was shooting with with my Canon gear I never had a Canon full-frame camera and I always had the the crop cameras 
So I had a 20D, a 40D, and I had a Rebel. But I always bought a grip for it, and I always loved, you know, having that bigger camera, that bigger feel, walking around with that 70 to 200 on there. The one thing that I always wanted way back then was one of their pro level cameras. So like the 1D Mark, well, whatever it was, it was just the 1D, you know, first iteration way the hell back then. Uh, because those were professional cameras and those had an integrated grip. It wasn't something that you bought and, and stuck in, in there. Giggity. Uh, so, you know, I, I've always been sort of obsessed with that, but then I come to find that there aren't really many that many cameras, and those are all back in the DSLR days, that, that had, you know, integrated grip and whatever. The bottom line was is that I always bought a grip for my, for my cameras, if they had them available. And I did have a grip for my a7 III, but I cheaped out and I bought like, I don't even think it was 50 bucks. I can't even remember the brand of it. And it felt like a $50 grip. It did the job, but I swear to Zeus, every time I touched that, every time I had to open the side door to pull out the battery compartment and change the batteries, I felt like I was gonna snap every piece of plastic on there. It felt so cheap. This does not feel cheap, not even on the camera. And this thing is solid. So. I'm pretty stoked about that. So we'll be putting that on there and it'll probably stay on there. Oh, okay, now we've got our Sigma 85 1.4 and naturally paperwork. Ah, and I stuffed it back in here, probably not correctly. Okay, this is a really nice case. There's the hood, here's the lens. So it, it's a very well padded case. It's got thick foam on the top and uh, padding all the way around another another like cushion there for the bottom for it to rest on. We'll just unceremoniously put that over there and chuck it out of the way. All right, here's another thing is lens hoods. I always put the lens hoods on there because like I said, when I told you that I always put a UV filter on there, I'm dangerous with my cameras. They are hanging off my shoulder or off my cotton carrier or on my hip or whatever. And I'm turning around and I'm not paying attention because I'm trying to get the shot and I'm running into shit. A lens hood has saved me a lot of money. And my lens hood take a beating, they get scratched and all that kind of stuff. But that's their purpose as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, they block light and all that kind of stuff, but <laughs> they're protection for me. So now we've got the lens itself. This thing is an absolute beast already. I can feel it. I'm not gonna go over and, and do this unboxing, you know, like I'm doing a lens review where I'm like, okay, it's got this and it's got a declicker and it's got an aperture ring and, and you know, it's got this, that, and you. nah, that ain't this kind of review. This is just an unboxing so I can show you all this stuff. Oh man, God, just looking at that glass. Yeah, all right, putting that back on. And it does have a, uh, like a locking mechanism. So this isn't coming off unless you push the actual button. And it's on there. I mean, it, it's beefy. Yes, this, this is gonna be my workhorse, my 85. When I bought my a7 III, I also purchased that with an 85. I bought the Sony 85 1.8. <laughs> the next day I was back at Best Buy looking at stuff and, and the girl that I knew there, who wasn't the one that sold me the camera, she was like, uh, what lens did you get? Did you get the package? And I was like, the what? And she's like, he didn't tell you about the package? And I'm like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, <sighs> she goes, so you bought an 85. Did you even want the 85? And I was like, well, yeah, I totally wanted the 85. But what are you talking about? And she said, well, there's a package. If you bought the camera with the 24 to 70, you got like a massive amount of money taken off. He should have told you about that because it would have been cheaper for you to buy it that way. And then down the road, even buying the 85 because the 85 wasn't part of the package. So long story short, she ended up having to talk to the manager because it was the day after and the sale had ended that night at midnight or whatever. So he actually like overrode everything they took, you know, they took the camera back, resold it to me with the package with the massive, it was like over $300 off that lens. And it ended up, you know, saving me all that money. And then I just kept the 85 and I bought the 2470 in addition to it, which I would have done 
had I known that there was a package. So salespeople out there, get your shit together and know what your sales are and know what your prices are because that dude could have sold me the camera and two lenses instead of the camera and a cheaper lens. You know, if there's commissions and all that kind of stuff or even just being knowledgeable, now I know not to go to that dude because he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Okay, thus ended the sermon. And then we got the big kahuna. This is the Sigma 100 to 400 in all of my photographic life, I've always wanted a 100 to 400 lens, and I've never gotten one. Till now! Okay, same thing, lens hood and lens. Look at this baby. This thing is, this thing is big. <laughs> oh yeah, this is awesome. I love that it's got a lock on it and all that kind of stuff. The lens hood that goes on there and it makes it even bigger. And then I might as well do this at the same time. This is the tripod collar. Again, kind of lame that it doesn't come with it, but okay. Now, one of the things about this lens is that it comes with this little silicone doohickey that goes over where the collar would attach if you were going to put a collar on. But if you weren't going to put the collar on, then it, it, they give you that little silicone thing to... Um, I might have to go to school to learn how to put this on. Oh! Okay. And there we go. Now we got the collar on there. And the reason that that I wanted that on there is because I literally grab right there when I'm shooting. So it, it is an incredibly necessary thing. Also, now this puts the weight on the collar, not on the camera, where the camera is sitting on the tripod and the lens is, is like putting all that weight on the connection point. Because we don't like that. Okay, so that's everything. What's coming tomorrow, theoretically? The two filters with the iCup. I also purchased the Godox 8200 Pro Flash, along with the digital uh, firing mechanism that goes on the hot shoe of the camera. I also did get another tripod. Whether I use that one for when I'm going around, it's a travel tripod, I, and I don't even remember what brand it is. Uh, it's not a really expensive one though. I, I, by the time it had like this 30% off deal, I got it for like $43. Yeah, it's not always good to buy cheap tripods, but sometimes it's certainly more acceptable to get a cheap tripod because they're cheap. And what I might do is I might keep the cheap tripod in here for the run and gunner second angle studio cam because it's not going anywhere. It isn't gonna take very much other than this uh, second A6600. And then I will use the Manfrotto tripod that I have it sitting on. It's all gonna be a matter of size and weight. The reason that I got that small travel one is because it, it collapses down, I don't even think to like 17 inches long. And this Manfrotto, it, it's old. I've had that for a long time. And you know, I'm gonna have to look into switching heads and all that kind of stuff. So I just need to see what's, what's actually working the best and, and what I really want to do with it. Okay, so a couple other things that are pretty necessary for this camera. Uh, screen protector. And this one is actually made for the uh, A7, it says A7R3, so A7R4, whatever. I'm gonna check to make sure it works. If not, I've got a couple other screen protectors in there. That's gonna go on here as soon as I'm done recording. The other thing that I have are the uh, cards, the SD cards. Now. Because this camera is, is such a beast and it has such large files and all that kind of stuff, I wish that I had bigger cards. I have two UHS-2 slots, so they're going to be filled with UHS-2 SD cards. V90, not V60, not V30, V90s. Period. That's the way it goes. Now, I just happen to have two UHS-2 V90 cards. I have one Sony which is the 128 gig, you know, reads of 300 and writes of 299. And then I have the SanDisk version of the same speeds. 
So I pop these out of the cameras because I have so many cards. I, I have collected so many cards over the years. And then, you know, as you get newer gear, I just get newer cards. And I still have plenty of SanDisk cards that are, you know, perfectly capable of doing the UHS-1 V30 stuff in all the rest of the, you know, the gear that I have. I would love to, be, again, to, to get 256 cards, but right now, after dropping all this money, uh, I, it's not happening anytime soon. And I should have enough here. I'm gonna stick it in the, you know, I'm gonna get this camera going here and put it together and I'm gonna go out and play because it's gorgeous out. And I'm gonna see what's happening, you know, and it's gonna show me how many, how many pictures I have, how much video I can shoot and all that stuff. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a still camera. You know how I always try to keep things separate and all that stuff. Didn't quite work out with that second A6600, which became my run and gunner or my second angle here. But I, this is a still camera. I don't plan on shooting video with this. I will in a pinch, but this is not a video camera for me. This is strictly a still camera, and that's how I intend to use it. And that's another reason why I'm thrilled that it only has this like screen that, that pops out like this. Not, you know, not the flippy screen, you know, not any of that shit. I love that about my A7 III. I don't like side flip out screens. They bug the shit out of me because then I'm always looking over here like this you know, instead of looking here slightly above. Personal preference, but I prefer this kind of a screen. So I'm, per I'm stoked that it's set up that way. Okay, I don't need to belabor the point. I just wanted to show you everything. I finally got most of everything. Whatever else I get, I'll, I'll show you over the next couple of days. Tomorrow, it's supposed to be sunny and it says 88 degrees. So it's gonna be 90 degrees tomorrow here in, in Virginia Beach. And I already planted the seed in my wife's head that we should go to the botanical gardens. And she was like, oh, that actually be a nice idea. I mean, it's gonna be gorgeous, so that's what we're gonna do at some point. I just found out I have a team call in the middle of the damn day, so it might have to be later in the day, but either way, I'm going out and I'm playing. And then she has to work on Saturday. I'll be playing all day Saturday. So that's that. That's all I got for you today. I'm totally stoked. If you have any comments, questions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me and like, subscribe and all that shit. And remember, kids, forward and up.